Hello everybody, welcome to this week's update video. My name is Martin, I'm an Inkscape de developer who develops uh, features and fixes for everyday Inkscape users. Um, users who uh, very generously support my Inkscape work through Patreon and LibrePay. Um, thank you all so much for allowing me to do the work that I do on Inkscape. And um, okay, so this week's video, I wanted to uh, reflect on the last week's Affinity Designer video. Now. If you didn't see it, I published a video with my comments, not just, but also like an invitation um, to, to talk about if Affinity Designer goes away or doesn't become available or isn't palatable anymore, then uh, what could Inkscape do to make it more accessible um, to those users? Now, in the past, I've made... Um, uh, polls for my Patreon users. I've I've asked Inkscape users what they want Inkscape to be and what they how they want it to improve. But I think it's important that uh, you not only listen to people who are inside the community, but also listen to people who are outside of the community. And in this particular case, the video was so successful that it, it, it attracted about 500 comments. Um, so I felt like it would be respectful and also interesting to uh, basically go through those com comments. Now, don't worry, uh, this video isn't me going through those uh, with you. What I've done instead is I've, I've read them all. So um, yeah, let's uh, go over here and see what we can see. Everybody likes a spreadsheet. And so I put together a spreadsheet. What I've basically done is I've gone through each of the com comments and I've digested it into its like essential forms. Um, picking a part where somebody said that they liked Affinity Designer or they liked Inkscape or they thought that Inkscape could improve in this way or that way. And uh, I figured we could just rank and go through each of the items. So first of all, uh, what I did was I figured all of the people who said that they used Affinity Designer and what they liked about it. Um, the, it won't surprise you at all to learn that the, the top reason why people like Affinity Designer is because it's not a subscription. And I think they should probably pay attention to that. Um, the next one, which actually genuinely surprised me, was that the, the, their iPad support was pretty much one of the main reasons why people use Affinity Designer. Um, some people said that it was actually the way in which it's exactly the same on the iPad as it is on the desktop, and the fact that it's not sort of, sort of like a weakened ver version of it. Um, that's something that we in the open source world need to pay attention to because uh, we don't have any iPad support. And I commented a couple of times replying to people that like Inkscape, Inkscape as a project can never be on the iPad, but for legal reasons, but f there may be possibilities for some future open source vector editor that might be possible on the iPad. And that might be something that we want to do uh, as some other project. Um, but then there's, there's these other items which are more like features and things, which is like non uh, destructive effects, masking, which I thought was very interesting. It's more about the editing, uh, the idea of fitting together the raster and the vector together, uh, which is a little bit more what Critter does in the, in the open source world. Um, better filters. Sometimes that was um, to do with like sRGB support, but I think mostly it's to do with like just offering better editing. And then opacity blend modes, which I'll be honest with you, I didn't fully understand. Um, but that's why I ask clarifying uh, com comments to try and like tease out what people mean, because uh, it's not always obvious. Um, I should say that I'm a Linux user and I haven't used Windows for 20 years. It's a long time. The last version of Windows that I actually owned on one of my computers was Windows 98. Uh, and that should just tell you just how disconnected I am from some of the concerns that people have, which is why I genuinely rely on uh, feedback because I don't know. I don't know. Um, okay. So this is one of the most interesting things is that whenever I make a video, there are P people that express their love uh, for Inkscape and for what we do. And it's always great to see. So I, I made a little count of all of the things that people like about Inkscape. Um, so there was a lot of love. Uh, a lot of people expressed that they liked the fact that it was open source. Um, genuinely, a lot of people uh, really appreciate the auto trace and the ability to trace bitmaps. Um, some more generic like, like I like Inkscape, but you know maybe I don't I don't use it myself. Uh, interestingly, a lot of people liked Inkscape because it, they felt like it had great potential. Like even if it had flaws today, that like it has the ability to become something special. Um, 
there are a lot of people who actually express that it was an advanced tool that like even if even if the functionality was hidden or, or generally wasn't obvious how to use it that it contained a great deal of functionality that you wouldn't even expect um a lot of people felt like the svg support itself uh, was important which is actually um actually good to hear because inkscape is an svg editor fundamentally it's not just a vector editor it is svg inside on the inside um not as many people, people as you might expect expressing the fact that it, it just didn't cost anything, though there was a few. Um, people do think, there are some, no, believe me, there are some people who thought that it was easier to use than Affinity Designer or especially uh, Adobe Illustrator. Um, a couple of pe people thought, thought it was stable, uh, like more, more so than other tools. Um, versatile. This was interesting. Somebody who um, expressed that they were thankful that it worked on older Macs. This is always a, a contention within the pro project about what things you support because uh, Apple are pretty relentless about the, the way their compilers work. So as programmers, we have to be uh, conscious about which platforms where we want to go for and what features of the language we're, we're allowed to use. Um, because if we support all the Macs, it means that we're not allowing ourselves to use modern programming features, and that can sometimes be in conflict. And there was a person who thought that Inkscape's uh, user experience, like the actual design of Inkscape, was better than Affinity De Designer. Um, I swear to God that comment really exists. Okay, so uh, those are the generic stuff. Uh, I did actually want to list off some of the things that people thought were problems in Inkscape. Um, and so the first few things, the way that I've, I've constructed this, this uh, spreadsheet is we have Inkscape users who thought there was issues and Affinity Designer users who identified issues. And then there's just a generic count. I've actually hidden some things here so we can go through through them. So some general things like stencil paint, painting. It looks like a raster tool. Uh, I'll be honest with, with you. I don't think Inkscape would add that. Uh, shortcut customization is actually something that I've added uh, I have been adding for a while now, and uh, Mike Cov and I uh, j just tag teamed on some shortcut stuff recently, which should improve things in 1.4. Um, basically, there are some hard coded things in Inkscape that need to be not hard co code coded. Customization in Inkscape is one of the main features, I think, that you can make the tool behave in ways that you, that like, it, a, a, a proprietary tool wouldn't really let you have that, that leeway. Um, parametric tools uh, seem like they're all about trying to make sure that you can uh, build shapes and things from values and just being able to enter va values, but more details and designs for that kind of fe feature would, would be necessary. More te templates are always good, but uh, templates genuinely come from you users. If you guys have templates and things that you think should be included in Inkscape by default, then you need to send them in because um, otherwise, like, developers... I mean, you think that developers are bad at design. Developers are real bad at stock uh, imagery and, and tem templates and stuff. Um, stock images generally comes uh, uh, along the lines of like access to the Open Clip Art Library, access to the Wikimedia Library, and making sure we communicate licensing stuff. There is an import uh, functionality that I added to, I think it was 1.2 or 1.3, um, which should allow some of that. But I understand why having a huge li library of stock fo photos is really cool. We just don't have the uh, licensing pull. So all of the stuff that we can provide is got to be open source or public domain or something like that. Um, there were some concerns about hardware compatibility, such as printers. And surprisingly, there was only one person who complained that it crashes too much. Uh, and I, I think one person said that it didn't work at all, which was interesting, actually. Okay, so now we get into the uh, more. There are people who generically just came into the comments to say that Inkscape was bad, but they didn't really say anything like why it was bad. They were just like, it, it sucks. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't, can't do anything with that. Doesn't, doesn't do anything. Uh, more interestingly, node editing is hard. This sometimes was to do with the pen tool, uh, being able to like edit while you were using the node tool, which is genuinely a problem. Um, and sometimes it was just like, the node tools that we're used to in Affinity Designer didn't work in the same way. Um, let's see what's next. Uh, brushes. Brushes was interesting because sometimes it, it, it focused around um, the uh, raster 
uh, type of brushes, but often it was just the fact that the Lipathofax brush it, like the way brushes work in Inkscape is very, very bad. Like the user experience is terrible. Um, it's t technically possible to add br brushes to Inkscape, but oof, yeah, that, that needs some work, I think. Um, the website is ugly. Now, th I, 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 I ha hold my hands up. So I'm the website administrator. I programmed the back end of the website and I took the design that was presented to the Inkscape project some 10 years ago and I developed it into the website that you see today. So I'm going to be very defensive about this, but but um, I think the website is good actually. Um, and I think this is because there's a misunderstanding about what the website is doing now, there were some people who mentioned the fact that like the screenshots were old and um, it didn't really list or show off the things that Inkscape could do. This is genuinely true, and this is because we don't really have um, documentation people. We don't have people who focus on just making the website up to date. Uh, website administrator, just a programmer. I, I don't try to get into some of the content stuff, but um, there's a difference between the website doesn't look like all of the other uh, uh, graphics app websites and the website isn't up to date um, and I think there is a genuine complaint there about the website not being up to date uh, which we need more volunteers for genuinely and then the uh, more aesthetic option about it not being like other websites I'm hesitant to comp to admit that the website is bad actually when it comes to the design because I think it performs its community role better than, say, the GIMP's website or Blender's website. But that's probably a controversial opinion. Um, as I said, you're gonna have to you're gonna have to call me biased because I'm genuinely the web the website administrator. Okay, uh, macOS issues. This tended to be things like uh, macOS. It 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 doesn't look right on macOS. It's slightly ugly, which could could be true, or it's slow. On macOS, which it used to be much more true now, uh, but now it, it should be much, much better. Some of these complaints tend to be legacy complaints, like people tried it five years ago and it sucked. Uh, and, it, and it's improved since then. Um, but we need to pay attention to the fact that uh, as a Linux developer, I'm not going to be able to see macOS issues as much. Uh, we've, we've recently just enabled a hardware pro program to allow pro programmers in the Inkscape project to have Mac and Windows and other hardware paid for by the project sent to them so that they'll be able to actually test things and, and make sure it looks better. Uh, aesthetics are important. Um, next we get into uh, much more pe pe people said that it, it was slow or it didn't feel fast. Um, there's a split here because uh, people who are on Windows and Mac uh, genuinely have uh, much more to complain about because both historically and I think uh, even today on Win Win Windows, it, it isn't as fast. If you're using a Linux machine, it's genuinely the best experience that you can have with Inkscape. Um, so we still need to work on that. Uh, some of that is library stuff. Some of that is out of our control a little bit, but we need to get our hands in to figure that out. Um, this is a really uh, depressing one, is iPad support. As I mentioned bef bef before, we can't really do iPad support. Um, it's possible to run Inkscape as a website and then use Inkscape through the website. I actually fixed a few issues with iPad support uh, using Inkscape um, through a website, um, and that's okay-ish. Um, but I wouldn't I wouldn't set a business on it. Uh, so, like, if you have an iPad uh, and you want to use a vector tool, I think you're better s sticking with Affinity, honestly. Um, okay, so now we get into the generic doesn't look good. Um, the problem with this complaint is that it's not actionable. There's nothing to do here. Like you can say it's bad, but okay. Um, it doesn't look pretty or it doesn't feel good or it doesn't uh, work well. These are all slightly different, but they, they, they're, they're genuine complaints. And I, and I really do appreciate pe people saying that they have problems. Um, but there's not a lot that can be done based upon just this information. Um, much more interesting was the people who um, 
went into details about what the problems that they had or the some of the things that they thought were u- ugly. Also, I think some of the people who said that it wasn't designed well or looked ugly or looked like a 90s program or whatever, um, I think they're using Windows, I think, or, or maybe Mac, because, again, this is one of those problems where, like, if the programmer can't see what it is that you see when you open Inkscape, we're not going to see the problems, we're not going to see the ugliness, because for us it looks real pretty. Um, that's also a thing we need to work on. Um Okay, so this is really interesting, is the text tool. Um, Inkscape's text tool is definitely better than GIMP's text tool, but it's clear that people, especially in the Affinity Designer community, expect much better text tooling. Um, there was a lot of uh, mentions of things like putting text on paths, putting text around circles. Uh, there's much better editor in Affinity Designer than Inkscape, and it's something that we really need to improve on. Um, okay, so this came up a lot, a lot. This is basically the... Uh, the ability for Inkscape to integrate into other tools like Blender and Critter and GIMP and so on, that the idea that we would have uh, either Inkscape would be a persona or Inkscape would be a part of a suite or there would be, you know, compatibility between them so that you would be able to move from one program to the other uh, or run them side by side and uh, data would flow between them instantly. Um, All of that kind of stuff is really, really cool. I really, really wish we had the resources to be able to do it. I definitely want it to happen and uh ton if you're listening blender uh could definitely be compatible with inkscape i I would definitely support that uh that project um okay this is pretty much the last one this is the top entry which is the cmyk color support which we kind of already knew right if you've been following my videos for a while now we know that the cmyk and the generally the color support um was the big issue Surprisingly, two people brought up the lack of uh, CSS column module support, which is not CMYK p- for print. It's more like support for web, um, which is good to see that like the p- people expecting Skip to be flexible when it comes to the, the web work, not just the print stuff. Okay, so these are the um, distilled issues. If you go into the com- comments themselves, you'll actually find that there's, a, there's details behind a lot of these things. Let's have a look at the specific problems we're just going to zoom through through these because there's a lot of them. But these are things that people actually pinpointed and went that thing. Um, there's no pre- previews in in the layers dialog. No, there's not. Uh, the node editing and the pen tool that I mentioned. Uh, 3D shapes other than squares. Uh, the Boolean maths is bad. Is really specific. It's basically, you're using the shape builder tool, and sometimes the resulting shapes don't look right. Uh, we call that the potato bug. But by the way, um, some of that is fixed. Some of that we need uh, mathematicians. So if you're a mathematician and you're really interested in seeing Inkscape be better, this is a great contribution that you can make. Um, center crosshairs disappears when dragging them. Uh, colors of the guides and rulers are ugly. This is the garish thing. This was a specific point about Inkscape being ugly. Um, uh, rulers should be a little prettier now. I, I definitely improved them for 1.3. 1, 1. Uh, made them softer and, and less garish. Uh, curved gra- gra- gradients, i.e. the ability to create uh, gradient meshes easier. Uh, you can use Inkscape to use, to, like as I said b- b- before, Inkscape has a lot of advanced features, but a lot of it's not easy to use. Um, dialogues don't adjust when resizing. Um, dialogue, this is basically, they, they, they have a maximum width. Dialogues don't stay where you place them. That's a bug. Um, the drag to zoom, uh, which is to be, this is a feature I didn't even understand at first. I had to ask for some clarification. This is some feature where you hold down a key and then you can use the pen to basically drag a, a, a zoom, I think, a box, or just zoom in and out. Uh, fonts don't update without restarting. This is a thing that I fixed in Linux, but I can't fix it in Windows and Mac. I don't know how to. Uh, so, yes, that needs fixing. Um, grouping to toolbar elements, that's actually being worked on in GTK4, so that should be fixed. Uh, it's hard to configure the, the scroll to zoom. This is my fault. I took the chat box out. I replaced it with a modify with the whole modifiers system. So technically, you can put the scroll to zoom back the way that it that chat box made it. But it it's like seven things that you have to do instead of a chat box. That's on me. Um, I'd love to see a design that can incorporate some of these things. Um, in a way that's not clunky. Um, I th- I think if we get the Affinity Designer keyboard map up to date it could include that for example um 
or maybe we could have some kind of other optional preference thing going on. Um, icons for objects used as depths in layer dialog. This is a real specific thing about when you're using uh, clipping paths that are also on the can canvas at the same time. Um, Instantly apply font when selecting. That's the font dialog. I think MyCov actually has an, an issue to, to do with that. Uh, masking by using layers. I think we already do that, but I think what they mean is they want uh, access to the masking object inside the inside the canvas so that you can actually continue to edit on it. Um, I think that's a really cool feature if we can e edit that. Uh, what happens today in Inkscape is masks end up being a, a, a group of objects that end up in the defs. Uh, or definitions of the SVG file, and they're, they're, therefore they're outside of the ca canvas. Once they're outside of the ca canvas, they're very hard to edit. Um, but masks are one of those interesting things where it's like a sub canvas, and if we can edit that sub ca canvas, then we can make mask editing much easier without having to undo the mask and reapply it. Um, missing JavaScript. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure how we can approach that problem since Inkscape isn't really a web developer tool. It is an SVG tool, but it's not, it doesn't have a DOM. Um, provide a one-time purchase option. This was really interesting. Somebody suggested that if Inkscape's website uh, asked you for money, um, that more people would fund the development um, and therefore we would be able to actually uh, invest more money into Inkscape, which is true. Um, save batch export pro pro profiles. This is a problem with um, the, uh, the batch exporter not saving the preferences for when you um, uh, do batch exports. Yep, that's that's a real issue. Um, scroll when the menus are open. This is actually a limitation on GTK. I don't genuinely think this is fixable. Um, we could use pop-ups, may maybe, but th that's a delicate, uh, complicated thing, unfortunately. Uh, selecting unfilled objects is hard. I I think this is an option in the preferences. You can actually go in and set it so that you can um, click on things that are either invisible or that have invisible fills. Uh, because clicking on tiny little strokes is, is hard, even with the forgiveness that we put in. Because if you're slightly further away from the stroke, we uh, we let you click on the stroke anyway. Um, single transformation tool. This is uh, where you um, can transform things from just one set of uh, no, um, handles. Uh, Inkscape currently operates Two, where you you click on it and it's resize, and then you click on it again and it turns into skew and stro uh, skew and rotate. Uh, we probably, if we were good to do that, we would add that as a preference rather than something we would have on by default. Um, slide node along line. This is something that I personally would want to have. Um, I don't think it's impossible to do. Uh, it it just needs to, a little bit of design and programming. Um, I might do that as a side thing as a volunteer because. As I said, I, I, I kind of want that too. Um, snapping jitters is, and, and is un, un, unfriendly. I think there's actually a fix for some of the jittering, um, but genuinely, if, if snapping does weird shit like that, uh, sorry for swearing, you should uh, report it as a bug. Um, there are too many node editing toolbar buttons. This is genuinely true. The node editor is very complicated um, and there are not a, not a lot of keyboard shortcuts for them. That's something we also need to fix. Uh, it's just making it more accessible. Um, units change when you're editing things in the toolbars. This is basically your uh, every time you click on an object, it refreshes the size, and when it refreshes the size, it sets the unit to the document unit. So if you, your, your document is in centimeters, it always goes back to centimeters, no matter what you were editing it in. I'm not entirely sure how to fix that, uh, because if we just remember the unit, then... Uh, we'll be breaking a bunch of assumptions in SVG, or we'll be saving a whole bunch of stuff in preferences. I I'm not sure. Um, maybe it's just as simple as just remembering the last unit that you used, uh, or providing you with a way to set it as the document. So uh, I added it in 1.3 as a way to right-click on the rulers and s quickly set the unit. Um, that should help. Um, a half-tone light path effect. So some people were asking the ability to create like uh, loads of clones that have different sizes or different um, tones or opacities and stuff. We do have some functionality for that, but um, for, for in the in the align grid where it traces the bitmap traces behind it to produce half tones and stuff. Uh, but it's not as easy to use as something that would be um, like a fill that you could just apply to something. It's more like a uh, a set of um, operations that you do, which is uh, destructive, right? It, it, it can't be easily changed afterwards. 
Uh, and then bitmap perspectives, that's kind of hard because we don't have raster tools. Okay, so those are all very specific. If you have stayed with this video this long, good on you because we have gone through some like serious nitty gritty of issues in Inkscape. Uh, you, you must be like really hard into it. Okay, so let's talk about some of the other counts. Uh, these are some of the other issues. Actually, did I miss some? No, okay, good. Uh, these are some of the funny things that happen in comments. Uh, these are 20 times we were compared to other open source tools. Uh, 15 people introduced to Inkscape. So people who said, oh, I didn't even know Inkscape existed. Uh, thank you for letting me know. Let me try it. That happened a lot. Um, people who commented on things that they thought, thought Inkscape didn't, couldn't do, uh, but actually we can do. Um, loads of people just saying that Canva sucks. Some people actually said that they regretted buying Affinity Designer or other tools at all. Uh, eight people posted their personal conspiracy th theories. Seven people posted non sequiturs, uh, which actually generally isn't that high for a comments section. Six people uh, are long-time Inkscape users. Um, five people commented about an issue and then came back later and said, oh, no, actually, I figured it out. Uh, five people posted long rambling uh, com comments about their personal history with Inkscape. Um, five people posted their political manifestos. Uh, four people asked us to just co copy Affinity Designer's uh, design aesthetics. Um, three people thought that open source was always bad at design, no matter what. Uh, two people thought that open source was too toxic, which is something that we generally work on in Inkscape. We have full moderation, code of con conduct, like you have to behave yourself in Inkscape. There's no, no BS. Um, open source is too slow to improve, which is genuinely a resource issue. Um, two people thought we should have user-owned cooperatives, which is a, an interesting idea. Uh, two people thought that my tea coat cozy was cute. Uh, two people had never even heard of Affinity. Uh, three people thought my hat was good. One person thought my hat was bad. Uh, one person compared Inkscape to have to having a cow in an office, and one person posted uh, how great it would be if Inkscape had a cryptocurrency. Okay, so <laughs> that's the <laughs> that's the the five hundred comments that were posted to that video. Um, thank you so much for watching this. Uh, Uh, the, so the audio cut out in OBS at the end here. Sorry about that. Um, thank you for watching this video and I will see you all next week.